हेलो एवरी वन आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल माई नेम इज डॉक्टर फराम आरफी इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द ऑपरेशन एंड द प्रोसीजर ऑफ द सेंट्रोफ्यूज टूडे वी विल स्टडी अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ द रोटर्स डेट हैव इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल ड्यूरिंग द सेंट्रोफ्यूगेशन प्रोसेस बट बिफोर मूविंग फॉरवर्ड बी श्योर टू क्लिक द सब्सक्रिप्शन बटन एंड टर्न ऑन द नोटिफिकेशन बेल सो डैट यू वॉन्ट मिस एनी फ्यूचर वीडियोज नो लेट्स मूव इन टू इट so mainly there are three types of rotors that is the fixed angle rotor vertical tube rotor and the swinging bucket rotor actually companies name these rotors as per their design speed and material composition speed here is the most important parameter this is speed is the most important parameter actually depending upon these speed the spinning rotor which are used in low speed high speed and ultra centrifuge experiences different centrifugal force under the influence of these differential centrifugal forces particles separate out from the suspension suppose this is a suspension and when you apply the centrifugal force by increasing or decreasing the speed of the rotors the particles will pellet out like this at the bottom of the tube accordingly keeping these things in mind different types of rotors are um, made from different materials like low speed rotors are made of steel or brasses while high speed rotors are made up of aluminum titanium or you can say fiber reinforced composites rotors for ultra centrifuge is made up of titanium alloy and are covered with polyurethane layer actually when you increase the speed actually in the ultra centrifuge the speed is very much high so the increasing speed increases or or you can say elevates the temperature of the centrifuge this increasing temperature generates so much heat so to avoid these heats and also from the corrosion this polyurethane layer is used uh, as a coating on the surface of the rotors similarly aluminum by reacting with the oxygen also form the aluminum oxide that again gives a protection against the corrosion therefore proper handling and care should be given to protect these protective layers from getting damaged now let us see each of these rotors one by one now let us discuss it it is said here that fixed angle rotors are an ideal for pelleting during the differential separation of the biological particles where sedimentation rates differ significantly what does this mean actually it is saying that the fixed angle rotor is ideal for pelleting or you can say separating those particles separating those biological particles that have different sedimentation rate due to why the different sedimentation rate the sedimentation rates depends upon the density so due to different density such as for the separation of the nuclei mitochondria microsomes these ha are having different density you can use the fixed angle rotors for the separation of the nuclei mitochondria or the microsomes so for the separation of these things you have to apply the centrifugal force in a step wise manner it is saying here that centrifugation is continued until the biological particle of interest have reached their isopicnic position in gradient this means the centrifugation should be continued until and unless the particle of the interest or you can say the biological particle gets sediment out or you can say it reaches to the isopicnic position isopicnic position means the position at which the sedimentation rate is zero and you all know that the sedimentation rate is only zero when the density of the medium gets equal to the density of the particle when the density of the medium and the density of the particle gets equal to each other 
at that position the sedimentation stops out or you can say the particles get settled down this is the cross sectional view of the fixed angle rotor in this the centrifuge tube this these two are the centrifuge tubes are held at a fixed angle that angle is in between 14 to 40 degree it can be any uh, might be 30 might be uh, 20 might be 25 but it should be in between the 14 degree to 40 degree and due to this r r that is the distance of the particle from the axis of rotation this distance is minimum at the top and will be maximum at the bottom of the tube such type of rotors can accommodate around 6 to 12 tubes since the centrifuge tubes are held at a particular fixed angle so under the influence of the centrifugal field it is said that the particles move radially outward and since the centrifugal field is exerted at an angle they only have to travel a shorter distance until they reach their isopicnic position before colliding with the outer wall of the centrifuge means when you apply the centrifugal force in this type of rotors when there is a particular fixed angle then in this condition the particle have to travel a very short radial distance means this is the radial distance so particle have to travel this radial distance only they they do not have to follow this route during the process of operation but they have to travel radially like this okay so so when you apply the centrifugal force suppose in this direction you are applying the centrifugal force then in this process of operation particles move radially outward particles move radially outward and uh, will travel a very short distance before they actually hit the wall so suppose the particles are collecting here at the wall right so before they actually hit at the wall this is the process like this it moves a very short radial distance and after hitting this particular wall the particles slide down through the wall and pellet will be formed here at the bottom of the tube pellet will be formed here at the bottom of the tube this is the initial step of the centrifugation and this is the final step at which we obtain the pellet at the bottom of the tube so in this after traveling a radial distance the particles hits the wall of the tube and after hitting the wall of the tube it follows a phenomena that phenomenon is called a wall effect and by the phenomenon of the wall effect the particles travel through the wall at the bottom of the tube and forms a pellet in this type of the tube or you can say in this type of the rotor the orientation of the tube changes repeatedly during the acceleration and deacceleration as it is said here during the rotor acceleration the sample solution and the gradient undergo reorientation in the centrifugal field followed by the separation of the particle with different sedimentation properties means according to their densities or you can say the sedimentation rate the particle sediments out or you can say the settled out at the bottom of the tube initially the all the particles collect radially like this here after that it will slides down below like this after that somewhat like this here and then by the wall sliding effect it collects at the bottom of the tube right so at the end you will get pellet at the bottom of the tube here in this fixed angle uh, rotor type the sedimentation rate is very fast that means 
the particles settled at the bottom of the tube in very much lesser time in comparison to the other type of rotors. But there is one disadvantage also here that you cannot separate the particles that are having the same density because due to having the same density or the density that are very much closer to each other, the sedimentation rate will be almost similar or you can say the sedimentation behavior of the particle, the uh, settling uh, property of the particle will be same. So, in this condition, you cannot uh, like separate the particular interested particle. Let's move to the vertical tube rotor. This is a cross-sectional image of the vertical tube rotor. These are the two tubes kept at a fixed uh, uh, position and uh, the tubes are held uh, uh, parallelly to the axis of the rotors that is at a 90 degree to the axis of rotor. There is no inclination, there is a no angle here. In this, the samples are separated along uh, the diameter or you can say the across the diameter of the tube, not along the or not towards the length of the centrifuge tube, across the diameter of the centrifuge tube. In this, the separation time is uh, also very less. Um, hence the sedimentation rate is passed as it is said here separation time is significantly shorter that means the sedimentation rate is very much higher shorter run time let's understand the working process of this uh, rotor by means of uh, these six tubes suppose the first tube is initially is at rest that means there is no any centrifugal field is applied that means centrifugal field is here zero no force is applied here so in the starting the sample and the gradient will be at rest like this but as you as soon as you apply the centrifugal field in this direction the sample or the gradient will start depositing like this in the first tube then when you move for forward it deposits like this across the wall of the tube then as when you move further forward the tubes reorients again and it will de deposits like this and as the rotor deaccelerates the gradient in the sample begins to reorient in this fashion and as the rotor stops the separation occurs in a different phases like this across the diameter of the tube and Finally, the tube regained its orientation as it was initially. There is a one disadvantage also in this type of rotor that sometimes the pellet or the phases may get fall out. That means sometimes these formed pellet or the formed phases may get mixed into the suspension or the mixture in the tube. But you can avoid this disadvantage by proper handling. Now let's talk about the swinging bucket rotor. Actually this is suitable for the large samples, maybe up to 12 to 15 liter of samples. This is the cross sectional view of the uh, swinging bucket rotor. Initially the tubes are held like this, but as soon as the start, uh, centrifuge starts accelerates, uh, then the tube moves to this direction. Rotors are actually gives a better separation. That it gives you a, a suspension without disturbing its pellet that you can remove the suspension out of the mixture without disturbing its pellet in this type of uh, rotor the samples have to travel a greater distance so due to the uh, greater distance the separation is here very much better in comparison to the other rotors so suppose initially when there is a no any centrifugal field is applied that means the centrifugal field is zero suppose so in the starting the gradient and the samples will be at rest like this and as soon as the uh, rotor starts swinging it changes its orientation like this here the centrifugal field is applied in this direction and then it separates out into a different zones like this and again finally the tubes regain its original orientation or you can say it reorients and the phases will be separated out 
or you can say you will get the phases in this fashion. It is generally used in the density gradient uh, centrifugation. So this was all about the different types of the rotors that we are using in different centrifugation machines. So thank you so much for today. In the next video, we will be discussing about the preparative and the analytical centrifuge. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much again.